So I want to tell you a story. I was at a, uh, a state uh, water conference a few months ago, and I met up with one of my colleagues. Uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, uh, works for a local water utility um, uh, based out of Georgia. And um, we, got, we got to discussing different things, and he, he flat out asked me, he said, uh, does, uh, does Stantec have tools uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning to, uh, to optimize treatment facilities? And I said, yes. I said, what, what processes were you interested in? And he said, well, I, wanted, I have a two pilot plants, and I want to do the whole pilot plant, the whole thing. And so fast forward to today, uh, we're still in the process of, of planning the project with them, but the idea is so significant that I want to, to at least go through and present what this was. So a utility that is forward-looking and, and, uh, and uses different things like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is what we would typically term as a utility of the future or smart utility. Now, what are the, what are the uh, components of us? of a smart utility or utility of the future. So most utilities um, have uh, different types of uh, siloed systems. A lot of times, uh, GIS, the information from laboratory, customer information systems, and there's a lot of cloud and third-party applications out there. Uh, what you'd want to do from a smart utility or utility of future standpoint is to take a look at, at getting all the data from those individual systems and putting it all together. So you'd be, you'd be able to run uh, different types of models, um, be able to integrate that and make sense of it. That in turn is then used on the lower part of your diagram there to, to influence how you run your different operational processes, different assets. The whole idea of this is to be able to have a connected and insightful workforce. One that's able to visualize, uh, able to analyze data, and, one, and be able to, to uh, make decisions and execute off of what they learn. To support this approach, we developed Stantec Altitude. And you've heard that from discussions uh, yesterday regarding dams. So the, the uh, example I'm going to give you here is related to a water treatment plant. But Altitude could be used. Uh, it is a cloud-based operational analytics platform. So it's taking a look at a lot of operational data that, you, uh, that you'd be producing and, uh, and be able to, to analyze that um, using different tools like machine learning uh, in order to be able to inform, inform someone to make a decision or in other case, uh, in this particular example, be, be able to actually execute an, uh, an operation of a treatment facility. So how's this, uh, how's this accomplished? I'm gonna get into uh, layers a little bit deeper. Um, so a lot of the data that we're talking about is, uh, is produced uh, and, and captured by different, different sensors. Uh, a lot of those could be uh, actually in your uh, automation or SCADA system. Um, there's other data that you could be getting from things like a laboratory information management system and a work order system. So Santec Altitude takes that and aggregates that data and prepares it to be analyzed. Um, the, the examples that were used in here uses machine learning. And again, you've heard that term a lot, uh, a lot over the past two days. Uh, the result of this analysis will be different types of outputs. And that could be in the form of notifications. It could be a dashboard. It could also just be a specific uh, uh, application program interface. In other words, I might just want to get the results of something uh, in particular. And I have another system. And we want to be able to service the community in that way. So I've been going on and on about artificial intelligence. So what exactly is it? So I, I, pulled, this, uh, uh, I pulled this definition uh, from Microsoft, not only because they're pretty invested in this, but also we do, we do use a lot of Microsoft uh, cloud-based products. So again, branch of computer science, the things I wanted to, to point out here is compute resources and array of data sets to drive automation and helping solve core business challenges. Um, there's a number of different elements underneath there. Um, I'm going to focus in on machine learning because that's the application that we used for, for this particular project that we're planning. So Gwinnett County is, a, uh, is a, a community in the metro Atlanta area, roughly uh, close to one million population. They have two large 
uh, drinking water plants, they're filter plants, uh, and they, they, uh, they treat roughly 200 million gallons per day as a, as a total capacity. So we wanted to take a look at, as part of this project, uh, running a pilot plant um, located in, in the basement of actually one of these, uh, one of these large plants. And the first thing we wanted to do is to optimize the operation of the individual unit processes. So when you're optimizing um, a, a plant, we've done a number of these in, in, in altitude with, uh, with a single unit process. You start with a single process, and then you move upstream and downstream from there. So that's kind of the, the method that we go through and, and do. Next, we want to evaluate and understand different operating scenarios. So the source of water for this plant is a lake, and the lake turns. So we're, we already know we're going to get some abnormal water quality. So we wanted to evaluate and understand what different operating scenarios were. The nice part about a cloud-based platform is that it could sit there and run many, many different scenarios. And so that was one of the reasons why we, we opted to, to take a look at this and again, use a cloud-based platform. The last thing, and again, they are already using this as part of the, the operation of the pilot plant, was to use it as a test bed for process improvements. So uh, there, there, are actually, uh, there are actually two pilot plants right next to each other. You'll see some pictures here in a second. One is just for drinking water. The other one actually has feeds in from their wastewater plant. So future adaptations of this would be able to, to run uh, AI and machine learning for water reuse. So I said I was going to go into detail, and I'm going to go way deep into it. So how exactly is this accomplished? Well, we need to understand more, more data around water quality. The plant is very well run, but we feel that there's some additional opportunities there. So we're going to set up additional sensors and water quality analyzers to capture that specific data. Again, if you remember that previous diagram, we're starting with, with your sensors. Next, we're going to set up control loops for each of the unit processes. We might have to make some minor adjustments based on what we learned from those analyzers. Next, we're going to configure the plant for autonomous operation. It has been running on its own, but we might have to make some changes based on things that we've, uh, and the particular setup that we have. The biggest difference here is that we're setting up a gateway to cloud-based analytics platform altitude. The whole idea here is to connect directly uh, to the cloud-based platform via secure connection to the actual automation system of the pilot plant itself. Next, we're going to generate training and test data sets that will be used for establishing machine learning models and then do model training off of those. We're going to fully deploy the process automation. Again, we've done a bunch of changes to the plant. We want to make sure it's operating correctly. And then we're off to the races, operations and monitoring. So again, um, the county constructed these pilot plants to mimic the two larger water plants. Um, and again, it allows them to, do, to run different types of things. So what results do we want to see? So we want to have the ability to understand impact of abnormal water quality. Um, in, if we have the, the seasonal event, we want to understand that. There might be other things that come into play. A uh, cloud-based system will be able to run those scenarios very quickly. We want to be able to see the most optimal way to operate the facility, um, and then also learn what we, we had in the pilots and be able to apply that to the, to the larger water, water plants. The whole idea is to put out safe drinking water, but operate it more efficiently, optimizing chemicals, powers, and salt, salts and residual handling. So I wanted to close with uh, how would you take a, uh, how would you apply this uh, to other elements of the water cycle? So taking a look at things from water supply clear through environmental buffer, which is water reuse. Uh, there, there are a number of different adaptations of, of artificial intelligence that you'd apply where you could take a look at getting additional gains on revenue generation, overall cost savings, and in pickups on asset management and capital planning. Again, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. Shi Chi Wang um, and Gwinnett County Department of Water Resources for having this initial discussion so we can continue planning with them for this project.